This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Jack Pocket. Feeling lucky? Huh? Are you? Well, get ready to try your luck with Jack Pocket, America's number one lottery app. With Jack Pocket, you can order Powerball and Mega Million tickets right on your phone. They, they even have official state lottery games. I'm talking about right here on your phone. You just whip your phone out. Whip, whip. Powerball. Whip, whip. Mega Million. Whip, whip. Official state lottery games right here on your phone at Jack Pocket. The official, the only one, the number one lottery app in the in America, like what we talk about. It's not number two, not number three. It's number one. Every day there are millions up for grabs right here on your phone. New customers get a free lottery ticket by using code Gilly. Whip your phone out right now. Download Jack Pocket. Use code Gilly. You get a free lottery ticket. That code Gilly is a free Powerball or Mega Millions ticket. Don't wait. Download Jack Pocket now for your chance to win big. And if you you went off my ticket, you know what I mean? All the millions, you know? <laughs> Throw a player back a little something, you know what I mean? I won't be mad at you. Jackpocket, America's number one lottery app. Get in tune. Download right now and use code Gilly. Jackpocket, number one. Right. You're now tuned into mint, 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 million dollars worth of game with yes. the OG. Yes. Listen, man, this guy right here, man, been in the game for so long. He dropped so much jewels on us. Um, one thing we got to salute him and always give him his respect and his flowers because he showed us the music game. He always was about his business no matter what from day one. I got to make sure my paper right. I got to make sure my paper is right. There's two type of paper. You got that quick paper. Yeah, yeah, take this, man. Just wrap, man. Just chill. And then you got that real paper where you know how much you're supposed to get so you go get it. And then he said, you know what? Let me educate y'all about this film game. Let me go ahead and shoot these films, show y'all this, and this is what we do. So we got to salute, man, the one and only, the legend, Ice Cube is in yes. the building, man. We yes. appreciate you, OG. Yes. We love you. And you and, and you know what? Right now it's about man down. And um for those that don't know, what what do that mean? What do that mean? Well, you know, it's it's a concept. You know, when I finished my album, you know, I was looking for, you know, the right title. Like what what does this record mean? You know, and Man Down was the title because I'm talking about a few different subjects where I feel like, uh, you know, I'm going straight at the men about standing up, about, you know, reclaiming their position in the world, you know, not being so emotional and mm -hmm. in their feelings and, mm -hmm. and you know, to man up basically, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's kind of a snapshot of where I think we are, but it's, you know, it's definitely not where I want to be, mm -hmm. you know. I want the real men to stand up. And do you think, uh, like, how do you feel being a being a legend in the game and seeing when y'all had to do it, like y'all really had to get up, go to each mom and pop store, in stores, sign all the posters, take all the pictures. Like y'all really had to be personal with it and really put the work in. What is your take on how it changed so much where people just sit back and like going to do an interview, going to sign an order, taking it? It's like let's look upon. Like, I don't do that. Shit. Like, how do you feel knowing that the, the whole everything that we have now was because of y'all? Y'all built and y'all kicked the doors down for us to have rather y'all um, two live crew, so we got freedom of speech, so we can say what we want to when we want to, and also have all these resources that we got in the hip hop game. Y'all, y'all sacrificed everything to get that. But now, how do you, how do you, how, how do you feel about how everything is just so digital? And it's not personal no more. Uh, it's whack. It's. Um it makes it feel like the music is disposable when it's, you know, it's creation, it's uh, inspiration. Um, and, you know, it's, it's like somebody, you know, playing you short uh, on what you really uh, are trying to achieve. And, and then artists, you can't play into that. You have to, you know, show people you care, show people that it's important to you, show your fans that they're not just a money grab, but you want to have an experience with them. And um, and if you don't do that, you don't end up being here 40 years later. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You end up, you know, f flaming out, cashing out, playing out. Um, so you got to be dedicated to, to give the audience quality and, and then put your stamp on it and be out there spearheading and cheerleading the projects, you know, 
people shouldn't have to beg you to do interviews or, mm -hmm. or you know, meet and greets, meet the fans, uh, promos. You know, that's that's the fun of the game. That's mm -hmm. you know, that's what make it fun. You like, damn, we not we not at a, a a slave job. We out here, you know, cultivating our hip hop and our careers and you know what I mean it's the middle of the day and we sign an autographs when other people are grinding you know and they mm -hmm. at work so um it's precious man it's this it's it's a privilege do you think because me and him me and cuz we big on groups like uh rest in peace to a little cousin his son cheese when they wanted to rap we like no y'all gonna be in a group we really big on it because it's like in the, in the hip hop now, we don't have it no more. Everybody's yeah. me, me, me. It's like you can break it down. You only got to write this. I can write this. We can battle in the in the studio and get more stuff done. You had NWA, Lynch Mob, West Side Connection. What is the importance in and what is the importance of doing it in a group? I think the fans love groups. You know, the fans love it. The artists don't love it because you have to cut up the money. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's three people in the group. Mm -hmm. You know, you cutting. You, you know, you want to mm -hmm. cut your check into three mm -hmm. parts. If it's two people, two parts. If it's four people, four parts. So everybody want the solo cash. You know, so the groups have not been the way to go in hip hop, um, as you know, as the norm. But I think there's always a place for groups. I think the fans like groups. They like the dynamics of having multiple people to get into mm -hmm. in the group. You know, you might start liking one person in the group and then you listen to the record more. Now you flipping over to another one. You're mm -hmm. like, no, he killing it. And mm -hmm. so um, it's a part of hip hop that, that I want to get back, you know, but like, you know, people got to really be into it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. if it's just a money grab, then they won't go to the group dynamic. But it, you know, if they came up in the game together as friends or a crew trying to make it, mm -hmm. then that's where there's hope for a group. And, and it's like a launch pad because, I, you know, like with, with Mac-10 and Dub C did coming up out of there, I'm talking about, man, banging albums. I'm talking yeah. about they, had, they, they, they was doing it. it it's, it's one of the greatest launch pads Especially for you to even want to do that to bring all your influence and your fan base and say, "Look at my two homies." Yeah, I yeah. think I think that's what. And if you look at Wu Tang, you look at all the groups that we had over the years. Everybody wound up little, you know, breaking off and getting their own situations anyway. But mm -hmm. the group bring all the attention to it. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. And it, it's just major now. How do you you know? How do you feel like when you go into the studio now, and you like that? Is it is it like what is the mindset of like all this different music out all these different sounds? How is you going to hear to approach it? Well, I think once you become an artist that's been in the game as long mm -hmm. as me, you know, call it a legacy artist. Mm -hmm. It's not about looking out mm -hmm. as much for inspiration. It's about looking in. Mm -hmm. It's about you know breaking it down to the simplest form of do what you like. That's mm. how you came out. Mm -hmm. Came out before you was chasing charts and chasing this and chasing billboard and scans and all these things. Mm -hmm. You just did what you like and everybody else had to kind of get in mm -hmm. on that. Then you get in the game and now you're looking at, oh, what is he selling? What is he doing? Do I need to you know, make them kind of moves so I could sell that. Now you're playing a record game. Mm -hmm. And once you realize there's there's really no future in playing a record game, you know, at a certain point, you're just going to have your clientele of fans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you don't service them, hyper service them, mm -hmm. then they'll go, they're going to find somebody else and you might look up and not have any fan base. Mm -hmm. So... It's all about doing what you feel and and kind of letting the chips fall where they may. And if you if you true to that, your fan base will come along. You know, the, the key is for Ice Cube to sound like Ice Cube, mm -hmm. not for me to be chasing right. uh, a sound or, you know, um, 
or chasing somebody else's success and try to, you know, do something similar is really about like, you know, I get this example when I go, if I buy a new Anita Baker record, I don't want her sound like Rihanna, you know right. what I mean? I want her to sound like Anita, Anita. Baker, right. like what I know. Right. And I'm to a point where when people buy Ice Cube record, they want it to sound like Ice Cube. Uh, absolutely. They yeah. want me chasing and mm -hmm. do what I like and then present it to the people. And you know, hopefully they dig it too. So let me ask you this. Being as though you've been basically running the culture for like 35 years, I'm talking about from music to to the to the movies to the big three. Everything is culture driven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you do you even being a legend that you are wake up some days and be like, holy sh this sh is amazing. This yeah. is incredible. Man. Of course. You know you. The gratitude is the attitude. You know I what like I'm saying? That. I'm in with attitude, but gratitude's mm -hmm. that attitude. It right. ain't. It ain't the other attitude no more. It's, it's being grateful for, you know, having these opportunities present themselves. Uh, grateful for not being afraid to challenge myself and, you know, accept some of these opportunities, even whether I knew the game 100% or not. Um, just trusting yourself, you know. And, and then being a student of whatever game you're gonna get in. Like you can't just jump in without learning the game and understanding the game and, and sometimes learning what you shouldn't do. Right. Sometimes that's the best thing to do is learn what you, what you shouldn't do before you learn what you should do so you don't make the major mistake. And so doing those type of, you know, <clears throat> you know analyzing myself as well as understanding, you know, where I've been blessed to be in the position I'm in, you know, it just motivates me to do better work, to be more prepared, practice and study more, and, and just try to maintain um, the quality for the people. Um, to me, that's, that's, that's where I am. That's where my head is. I'm glad that's where my head is, you know, that I'm not. You know, I, the money's cool, I love it, <clears throat> it's fun, but that ain't what it's all about, it's really a tool. You know, this is really about creation, inspiration, um, you know, letting the universe speak through you, and just being um, being ready for, for the opportunities when they come. You know, you know, what I notice is, you always take your class with you, and I'm gonna break it down. And I love that. And I was talking to Drake when we was at the last big tree, and I was snapping because I was kicking it with Tretch, right? And I'm like, damn, man. Every time I come here, it's like Kane. You know, because we've been in big three for years. It's like, what is the importance of taking your class? When I say your class, the class of MCs that was operating with you from the beginning in the 80s, like like I see Kane there. I see Tretch, like everybody that was like, why is it so important to utilize your platform to continue to amplify them and honor these legends that came up with you. Why is that important? <clears throat> to me, that's it's nothing better yeah, than it. to show love to somebody that you've been a fan of, mm -hmm. somebody you grew up on, somebody that you respect, and and and, and give them a, a spot to shine at, or or let people know, yo, <clears throat> you know this this is one of my folks. This is somebody I love and respect and grew up on and y'all should love and respect them too um and and it's cool you know to have something like the big three to be able to invite you know the the, the personalities of the culture you know like yourselves <clears throat> to come participate and mm -hmm. have fun and you know I, I'm, I'm just grateful that you guys you know um come and be a part of it you know you can say I oh, man you know I got something else to do no. you know but uh it just makes it special it makes it uh it's, it's the reason why it's been here for seven years mm -hmm. is because the culture has embraced the league and has shown up mm -hmm. you know uh, I'm always happy to see anybody you know coming through them doors at yeah. the game 
especially from the culture, especially that people know, love, and respect. I want to put them on blast. I want to get them on TV. I want to show the whole world that they're there. Right. You know? This episode of Me and Osworth for Game is brought to you by DraftKings. The roller coaster of the NFL season is moving right along, and it promises to be a month full of tricks, treats, and, of course, touchdowns. And DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Is the number one place to bet touchdowns. Running it in from the 80-yard bomb, we don't care how they score touchdowns. We want to bet on them. DraftKings heard us, and they're delivering. Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your pick. Here's a reason for new customers to do touchdown dance on their own. Bet $5 and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Bet $5 and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. All you got to do is download DraftKings right now and use code Gilly. Come on. Go get that money. I'm giving you time to download that right now and get that money. Punch in promo code Gilly. You bet $5, you get 200 instant bonus bets. What are you waiting on? The crown is yours. Put it on. It fits. Right. It's always good for us because, like, you one of the guys that come up before us that we looked up to that was an inspiration yeah. to us because it's never no settling for you. Never. It's always okay. And, and you come off as a person that, like, Everything he do, he do good. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, you may have failed a lot of times, but we've never seen your failures. Every time you come out with something, it's like, that shit pop off. That, so it give us the inspiration to be like, oh, no, no, we're not just stopping with the podcast. Let's go get this. Let's go get that. Yeah. Let's, get, let's get a little steak in this. Let's get some steak in that. Let's try our hand in this. So you really are one of the people, the, the front runners that bring the inspiration to us. You know what I'm yeah, saying? For yeah. uh, to drive us to be great. I want to ask you a real question. Like, how are you doing? As j just you, the person, not mm -hmm. the ice cube, just you. Because when you obtain a lot of things in life, yeah. people never ask you that question. Yeah. They just assume that you mm -hmm. good because financially you good. Mm -hmm. How are you, O'Shea, how are you doing? Oh, man, I'm on cloud nine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm on cloud nine. Um, living my best life. You know, got my family, um, you know, a couple of grandkids. Yeah, you know me too. Saying? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, bills paid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't owe nobody no money. Right. Um, and life is lovely. Life is great. You know, I, I always had that attitude, though. Um, might not seem like it, but I've always, you know, understood that there's going to be ebbs and flows to life mm -hmm. and um nothing la you know nothing bad lasts unless you let it unless you um dwell on it unless you um allow it to to work you mentally mm -hmm. uh so you know I'm just I feel grateful and blessed to be in this position um and I'm doing good, you know, thank God. No issues. I want to I want to give a shout out right to the Big 3 because um the breakdown of Big 3 for me is like a family reunion. Not for the artists and celebrity be there, but we see so many of the people that support us and it's, it it don't is a game, but it feel like just like a fan bunch of people. I'm talking about the audience. I'm talking about the connection yes. to the how the audience is so comfortable with everybody that's involved. Yo, man, it's like the people taking, you can take, it's not like a real game. It's like a family, a family get together. It's like the energy is unbelievable. Just the energy in the town. Like even us being in the towns, no matter whether it was a Baltimore, I mean, DC, Atlanta, uh, Boston, it was just like the town around, the, in, the, the, the energy around the town. You get, it was, it's just like, it's a great vibe, man. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about unbelievable vibe. And we and we thankful that you always bring us out, man, because you don't have to do it. You know what I mean? So we always thankful and we always gonna come. Now, when you went into this, you know, this session and you said, I'm putting the album out, what was the first conceptual song that came in your mind? I wanna oh. talk about this. 
This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Skims. When I first got introduced to Skims, I'm only thinking this is women's stuff. But, you know, I get, you know, a gift for the holiday. My ex, she bought me some Skims. And I'm like, why did you buy me Skims? Well, that's for women. No, they're not. Bang! She bought me some of these. One thing about these Skims, man, I'm going to tell you something. They don't move. They don't go nowhere. When you got them on, you don't have to keep adjusting them or none of that. And not just that, they advertise your package in a way your package never been advertised. I'm talking about they fit great. They soft. Sometimes I feel like I ain't even got nothing on. I feel like I'm just free balling. I'm walking around with just my pants on. What you need to do is you need to get down to, you need to get in the Skims game. Skim are for men, for those that don't know. And for all you ladies out there, huh. Do what I, you know, take care of the guys that like I was taking care of. I got some fresh skims, and, you know, let me tell you something. They changed my life. I've been wearing skims ever since. They just feel great like nothing is on you. It feel like skin, and they don't move, so you're not even feeling nothing. They're great quality. The quality feel good. They got them in different colors. They got them in different lengths. Go out there right now and get your skims. When you do go get your skims, tell them I sent you. When they be like, damn, how did you know about us podcast? I'm telling you. Tell them I sent you. Go to skims.com right now. You know, shop skims for men. Go out there, do your thing. The holiday is coming up. Load up on your skims. And it's just like that. I think the first conceptual song, you know, I got a song called, uh, it's called Talking About These Rappers. rappers. Go ahead. Yeah, and talk to me. it's about, you know, people on the internet just talking about rappers, you know, um, and making that their, their subject to the point where they're, um, they're trying to, to, I guess, um, make the make the culture aware, but they're they're like living off of the bad stories of the favorite artists of the day, and I just think it's a problem mm. with that. I think it's a it's a thing that you know, when you got the mic, you have responsibilities to hopefully try to uplift. You know what I'm saying? Of course, if it bleeds, it leads. But, you know, it's just, to me, to a point where it has to be spoken on because it's just constant every day. Um, people on the internet just, you know, dissing this rapper, dissing that rapper. And um, to me, that was like, that was the first song that, that I felt like, okay, this is the start of an album. And I got a song called Scary Movie which is talking about, you know, how crazy the game is, you know, and it's got a bunch of movie analogies. Um, song in there called So Sensitive, which is talking about just being emotional. extra emotional. Oh my God. Damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh my so, God. Um, yeah, you know, that's really got it, you know, got the record going. You know, It's My Ego is a record that you know, so many people think ego is a bad thing, but right. you know, our egos make what what makes us unique. Mm -hmm. It makes us stand out. It makes us proud of who we are and what we accomplish, mm -hmm. um, and proud of who we are. And I don't think it's something that we should be suppressing mm -hmm. just to get along or fit in, or it's making everybody seem like they don't have a personality. They mm -hmm. don't have a. a um, you know they don't have the the, the confidence. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, you know, it's a song where I was just like, "Yo, let's celebrate our ego mm -hmm. instead of saying it's a bad you got, thing." You got a line that you always say. Uh, Something about they don't want you to show who because it'll bring out their insecurities. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times they try to say humble, humble. You know, be humble. No, what, what I put was to downplay my celebration and my happiness because I won. Mm -hmm. To make you feel, you know, the cater to your egos and your shortcomings. No, no, no. This, this, you know, that humble word is a wild word. Be humble. What the f you mean? Everybody got the ego and everybody got a feeling of I'm celebrating the, sh the work I put in. You put this work in, Cube. You, you, you here for a reason, you know. But another thing is this. I always wanted to know, and I've been. I was supposed to ask you this at the game. Who is somebody? They gave you the most game during your journey through this. That gave you game on the, like that you went to and was like, and they laid it laid it down for you and schooled you. Who schooled you? Oh man, um, I would say I had a manager by the name of Pat Charbonnet. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a PR, um, the 
PR person for Priority Records when NWA and okay. my solo stuff. And, you know, she was <clears throat> able to lace me with a lot of game on on the music business and how, how you stay relevant. Um, how do you become an artist that people care about and not just um, a song maker, you know, that they might not care about? And you know, so I learned a lot about just being true to yourself, which keeps you true to your audience, and um, and and to let the chips fall where they may. Mm-hmm. You know, if 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 you rub some people the wrong way, um, don't change who you are because uh, some people may have not liked what you did. You know. Um, Essentially, that's their problem. It's not, don't make it your problem, you know. And and so I learned a lot of game from her. I learned a lot from Eazy-E. Um, I learned a lot from Lonzo Williams, not him showing me, but just watching him and how he, you know, um, he was the first, you know, leader. He was the leader of the wrecking crew. Mm-hmm. He was putting out independent, yeah, he's putting out independent records through McCola and, um, just watching how he handled that business and end up learning a lot. I'm glad you said easy because I'm one of them boys grew up off in there and easy was my man. That easy does it. That was my shit. He was my man. What is the game that easy gave you? Um, trust yourself. Um, don't, don't, um, don't, don't play the game to the point where you play yourself. Mm. So it's a game that's being played in the record business, but you don't want to be playing the game so much that you lose yourself as an artist. You don't put out what you feel is real. You know, just always do what you feel is real and then let the industry figure it out. Mm -hmm. See, when we first came out, we thought we were going to be straight underground artists. We was like, we not gonna get no radio play. Mm-hmm. We not gonna get no love. We West Coast rappers, so we felt like mm-hmm. we not about to be as big as Rock Him and you know, um, you know, Heavy D and the shit. Boys and all that. We wasn't gonna be as big as them. We felt like we gonna just be off. underground. Straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube yeah. from a gang called yeah. Ed. I was twelve years old like this. My cousin was not that gonna. Was wild shit. Man, I love it. Yeah, and and so we was cool with that because we was like, yo, we gonna be big on the West It don't matter. Case. It don't matter if we ever get big. All that matters is we doing what we like. The people in the neighborhood love it, and we just gonna be like neighborhood ghetto stars. You mm. know what I mean? That was cool enough, and then it just blew up. Now, now, now one thing about it, y'all was West Coast, but for some reason. You explored out. You yeah. like like what was the importance of that? Because that's what helped you get your longevity and connected with different producers coming to New York. Coming, what what would encourage you? What empowered you to like? I, let me let me see more of this. Shit. Let me see the country. My favorite groups was on the East Coast. Yeah. PE. PE. I mean, you know, all the way back from Run DMC. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Slick Rick and uh-huh. you know Dougie Fresh, uh, EPMD, mm-hmm. uh, Salt and Pepper. Um, you know, it was just a plethora of superstars on the East Coast doing all the music that we love. So, you know, we were West Coast, but like I said, all of our, you know, all the groups we like was from the East Coast mostly. Did you ever think that hip hop would take it this far? It would be so big back then? Like you? Nah, you know, I didn't. It was so. And when rap first came out, hip hop, it was shunned by uh, regular musicians, you know, soul singers and and R and B artists, and everybody dissed it, said it wasn't real music. So I felt like um, this was the plight, you know, that this was just going to be an underground street thing, and um, and then it just started to grow and grow, and then you know, Run DMC took took it from, to me, from just a street side thing to, you know, a profession, you know, where 
Oh, you can. Really? Yeah, you can rock a stadium. You can rock um, arenas. Um, this is how. It, this is what it takes to be a pro in the rap game. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Body Armor Sport Water. The alkaline water that provides real hydration with electrolytes for taste. Everybody is always drinking it around the office, the sports drink, the zero sugar, and even the flash IV. After a long weekend, we can't get enough of body armor. The sport water, in my opinion, is the best water on the market. I mean, as I speak to you right now, I'm a little thirsty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this open just a little bit. Needed that. The alkaline water tastes so good. Shout out to uh, Body Armor for the sports water, though, that they send us all the time because this is really some of, if not the best water on the market. So when you're out and about, make sure you head over to your local 7-Eleven and get you some Body Armor sports water today. Why not? It's some great water. Body Armor. Try it. So how did it feel when you finally, now you there. Now you land in New York and the, the same people that you was just looking up to like, oh, Ice Cube. Yeah. What's up and I f with you? How you feeling now? It felt like I'm in the league now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, your youngsters playing in your backyard in high you school. Just got drafted. And now you in the league. You know, now you there, you got to show and prove. You can't just be anonymous. Right. You know, everybody going to see what you do now. Before we would make yeah. records and yeah. put them out, we didn't know yeah. if anybody was going to yeah. ever, yeah. you know, see the light of day. Yeah. But now, you know, you at a point where everybody know who you are, what you do. Now you got to, you know, continue to be great. You coming into the game, young, right? You talk about them stages where, oh, I just want to be, a, you know, a ghetto superstar mm -hmm. around the way, you know. But then it starts growing. Who was a, who was one of the first people that you bumped into, that was like, I mean, it could be anybody, an actor, rapper, comedian, anybody, a movie star, that was like, oh, shit, Ice Cube, man, I love your shit. And you like, oh, shit. that's such and such. Oh man, um, a few different people, you know, getting that from, from, um, you know, Eric Sermon. Okay. Uh, yeah. It from Biz Marquis. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, just getting it from LL. Um, yeah, because LL was he was he, he was, was out before. Yeah. You know, he was a LL was like LeBron. He was a superstar yeah. from day one. Like and he seen you like man, I and, f with you. Yeah, shit. you know, and um, that just you know gives you put them batteries in yeah, your back well, to keep doing. Imagine. You know, Chuck D who, you know, is my favorite rapper. Public Enemy is my favorite group. And um, just being able to know these dudes and mm. talk to them and mm. have them embrace you. Um, you know, Stessa Sonic, you oh know, them God, dudes, yes. you know. Prince Paul um, gave us a lot of love yeah. early in the day. For some D's, you know, yeah. <laughs> gave us love in the, you know, in the beginning. And it was cool because we was fans of their music and everybody embraced us. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we got we got booed at the Apollo. We got booed at the Apollo as NW, Easy e and NWA. This is when we only had a few singles out. Mm -hmm. And we didn't perform none of them there because they were so raw. And, and, and they was like, you can't do these records, you gotta do those records, so. We went in there, you know, kind of unknowns. You know, people mm -hmm. didn't know who we are, were. So they started booing. Then we did uh, uh, We Want Easy, and then they all, you know, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, okay, that's mm -hmm. them, that's them. Mm -hmm. You know, because we had that video out. Yeah. And so we was like, you know, feeling, feeling up because we got booed at the Apollo. Mm -hmm. We only seen that shit on Amateur Night at the Apollo. Yeah, yeah. And this wasn't even an Amateur hey, Night. Hey, right, come right. on the board, come on. We get this ain't even the show, and we yeah. so, <laughs> so yeah. but 
We was in the elevator, and then um, Run was in the elevator. And Run was like, yo, yo, where y'all from? You know, you know, where y'all cash from? He was like, yo, from uh, California, you know what I mean? And so I got a song, Easy E. I got a song called, uh, um, I got a song, you know, out, you know, Boys in the Hood. He's like, yo, you do that song, Boys in the Hood? It's like, man, that shit. It's banging, man. You know what I mean? Keep, man, don't worry about that apology. Just keep doing what y'all doing. Keep keep going, man. Mm. That shit is banging. And we, uh, we, you know, that gave us, you know, that, that pep just back like, up because, yeah. you know, if Ron say we good, God damn it, we good. Mm. And next time I came to the Apollo, I was solo. And uh, that shit was different then. It was different. They, they rushed the doors. It was all in the hall. Broke the banister, throwing money on the stage. That was yeah. one of them joints you left out of there, like, yeah, you bitch. I, I got yeah, y'all back. Man, I was like, I got y'all back, I came back you, couldn't tell, you couldn't tell me nothing after <laughs> after that show because going into that show, I'm circling on the calendar. New York on the oh. New York on the twenty first. Oh, okay. Shit. Okay. Shit. Y'all ready? We ready, man. Remember that happened? Okay. Make sure that shit don't happen this time. Yeah. So but when we got up there, it was all love, and uh, had one of the best shows I ever had. And and um, they was throwing money. I'm mm. like, you go from getting booed to them throwing money on the stage, like dope, dope boys, D boys, just throwing that shit up there. It was cool. How was it when that when that letter from the FBI came to NWA? Um, well, it was kind of like. Yo, where you at? Where you at? Boom, 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 huh? Yeah. Come pick you up, man. Brian Turner want to talk to us. Um, that was the president of Pri- President of Pri- uh, Priority. Priority Records. So yeah. we didn't really know what he wanted. You know what I mean? We have been up there a few times. Yeah. For different. So I just was like, maybe, you know, he want to extend the deal. I don't know what he want to do. You know, I'm mm-hmm. just going off the ride. He say, come on, let's go. So we up in there, and then he, they're all nervous and shit. You know, scared, and they're like, "Yo, we got this letter from the FBI." And he's like, "Man, can you believe this shit? The FBI is like telling us we need to take our record off the shelf." Mm-hmm. And um, so Easy jumped on. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So he's like smiling and shit. He's like, "Man, this is this is crazy right here." So we all reading and looking at it, and. So I'm like, well, what they gonna do? Yes, we going to jail. Like, what they gonna do? Just this it? Just a letter? And then we, now we laughing because we like this it? Like you called us up here because you got a letter? I mean, we know it's it's in their house kicked in the batter rams and you know the LAPD the sheriffs actually put their hands on you. Ain't right. they ain't gonna give you no yeah. letter telling you to stop? So. We young, naive, not really understanding, like, man, you know, what you all scared about? Easy is like, yo, let's make this shit public. Yeah. Let's get some publicity off of it. And, and Brian's like, man, I don't know, man. We should just lay low. I don't want these starting to fuck with us. And um, so we end up putting it out in the press and, and it's just like using it. It made y'all bigger though, didn't it? It did. Between that, being banned on MTV, um, those things that where they was trying to like suppress us, it just made us bigger. But but didn't they come back and mess with y'all after with MTV? Huh? Did they come back and let y'all back in? After yeah, thing? yeah. After you know, after the, we did a few different yeah. tracks, they start. Yeah. They end up playing straight out of Compton, but it was a big it was a big thing about them banning the video. Yeah, because I remember you always driving around in Compton with a. Uh, Fat Five Freddy. Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. It was like, that's real. How the fuck do you remember that you was probably like eight? Man, I was watching all that shit, man. I thought I was a part of the group. I was a member of the UNC, nigga. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm, you was one of the lynch mob that got, got your ass up. You was the only part of the lynch mob used to get your ass But it didn't matter. I was a part <laughs> of it. This episode of Me and Osworth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, um, you know the, you know the, you know the slogan. Life ain't going your way. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. You caught your wife cheating a day. 
shot a New Amsterdam vodka. You thought that money was coming your way and it never arrived? Shot a New Amsterdam vodka is distilled five times. It's filtered three times for a clean, crisp finish. You could drink it straight up on the rocks, juice, soda, or you could just make a classic New Amsterdam meal. But as you can see, this bottle right here, you see where the New Amsterdam is at. We was in here getting busy, you know what I mean? Cocktails and, you know, straight shots and, you know, however you like it, you know. But it's great for pre-gaming as well. So just know it's NBA is arrived. It's football season, you know, it's baseball playoffs. So when you're out and about at your local liquor store, make sure you get you some new Amsterdam vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports. Right. Now, now with this new album, right, you, you, you brought some legends out with you, man. Mm. You got Be Real. You mm. got corrupt. You got a JD mm. on there from Lynchman. Like, mm. like, how did you do the selection? Like, what was it like? Who was you think? Was you thinking him? He had sound good on this, or was they just around? It was a straight inspiration. Okay. You know, um, with the JD song, you know, I know I wanted to do a song with him because mm. he had just got out of prison and you know he wanted to show that he was back on the mic. Yeah, it was cool. And um, you know, the Snoop, um, Too Short. Yeah, Short Dog. Um, yeah. E40, you know, we had just did Mount mm -hmm. West, yeah, yeah, so yes. that was a, a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Then I had never done a song with Exhibit, you know, in all these years, so mm -hmm. it was cool to do a song with Exhibit. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, getting B Real, I wanted to do a, 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 records, a record where blacks and Latinos can, can come together, yeah, you know. So, um, let's get money together is the name of the record, and so it was just pure inspiration mm. and um corrupt david banner had did a track and corrupt um was out there and jumped on it and then i was like man this shit sound good you know what i'm yeah. saying so i, I kind of formed reformed it into a song that that works for the record is you gonna shoot videos for all them features maybe not all of them but a few of them yeah mm -hmm. yeah like, how do you process that knowing you're a director yourself? Do you have somebody else be like, oh, you do it? Or you, or you do you take on that too? Like, I'm going to shoot this, I'm going to write the treatment. Well, I, I, you know, I definitely wrote the treatment mm -hmm. for for this new video. It's my yeah. ego. Mm -hmm. yeah, but man. I had uh, Gabriel Hart, who's done a few of my videos, mm -hmm. you know, let him take on the director role. Uh, I, I, like, I like being in the producer's role. And... Um, and being able to kind of, you know, help the whole vision without being locked into it, like a director has to be. Mm -hmm. A director has to be 24-7 yeah. on this one thing. And I got so many other things going that it's better for me to produce. You created one of the greatest movie franchises in our culture. Is it coming back Friday? Yeah, it's coming back. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. Well, he could be the, me and him could be janitors in the movie, <laughs> and I can chase him around and some. Shit. Like, and and, and uh, it's gonna be some big surprises, huh? Yeah, you know, we're gonna do what we need to do to make it dope, make it funny. Um, you know, bring it up to date. Mm -hmm. um, introduce new characters. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bring back the old characters. Mm -hmm. and, you know, just create that feeling that the movie gives you. Of uh, you know, people love Friday because everybody it was real. pretty much experienced it. Was real, that. man. That's yeah, crazy. Crazy. you high? Well, high. <laughs> he wiped his shit off. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's some high. I still look high. <laughs> everybody yeah. in there, every character in there, somebody knew that from some name, exactly. that person from around their way. Mm -hmm. People love Friday because everybody's lived Friday. Yeah, yes. everybody. Everybody in lived. our culture. Yeah, yeah. Been hanging out. Mm -hmm. With they homie, with they friend, yep. with they cousin, trying to figure out what we gonna do today. Mm -hmm. How we gonna Just make tripping happen. off the neighborhood, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And so it's so relatable in that way because everybody has lived a thousand Fridays. And it was always like, that one bad old head in the hood. All that, <laughs> all that, you know, every Crazy, aspect. Yep. Yep. Is everything he had every little part in there, man. Dude, to get out of jail is just crazy. Uh -huh. It's always somebody, but now. What's next for Cube? At the man down, you got the big three, you got like everything, like you got Friday coming, like 
how do you keep cre- being staying creative to think of something new? Um, just keep living, you know. Don't press it. Don't force it. Mm-hmm. Um, just stay open to the universe to to you know give you that inspiration. Like, oh, damn, mm-hmm. you know that can. You know, let me let me write that down. That can that can be in the movie or mm-hmm. this right here is some cool. Sh- I got the right movie. I'm gonna put that in there. So it's just like collecting, you know, these these moments. Yeah, moments, and then figuring out. Okay, now's the time to use that moment I was thinking about over wow. here in this project. Wow. Oh, that right there could fit here. Yeah. So it's like always collecting that kind of stuff, and you know, you look up. You got enough ingredients, and it's like, yo, let's do let's do this cool project right here. Listen now, now, when is the tour coming? Because I know it's going to be a tour. Yeah, we want a tour. You know, hopefully early. You know, the record going to drop. Eighteenth uh, November. What the single drops single on drop the eighteenth. Album drops on November twenty second. Okay. So by January, we probably have a tour going. How do it feel, man? Like, like you, you, you know, what's so great when we people like you go on tour and some of our legends. It showed a rock star moment because in our culture, it's like, is it like a time limit on it? But but no, we got rock stars too. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that tour the world. Like, mm-hmm. how do it feel when you go out there and you see people that have been coming to your shows? It's like forever. Like, how do that feel? You grab that and, and that thing come on, that good day come on, and you, yeah. uh, you know what I mean, or uh, check yourself come on. You just how did that shit feel to this it, day? It, it feel amazing to. You know, see fans that's been there, and then they bring their kids. And yeah, you see different generations coming to the show. Um, and you know, it's really, you know, inspiring. It really inspires me to just give them their money's worth, you know, make mm-hmm. sure that we on point. You know, I don't rap over the lyrics, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's instrumentals and we grip mm-hmm. it and we rip it and, and people, um, they enjoy it cause they, they feel like they, you know, they they grabbing something like a a piece of of um, hip hop history and um, and you know to me that's what it's all about. It's about staying a pro and you know letting people see a real hip hop show. You know how I saw it when I was young um, and um, different fans, different age groups love it. You know, you well, see eight to eighty in my, in my show. You see, bottom line is, this is a soundtrack to a lot of people's lives. Yeah, yeah. Because when certain songs come on, like I said, Str- straight out of Compton, I took me right back. I was twelve years old. Yeah, mm-hmm. you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it took me back to when we was on. I'm riding with my cousin Rice in a Toyota Corolla. We're on JFK Boulevard, and he hit this f- lady while that song was on. She went fifty feet in the air and that shit was screaming out that Toyota. Wow. Yeah. yeah. From a gang called <laughs> she in the air and shit like so as you you grow you then you another song come on you like damn I was in college when that shit came yeah, out. Was a person then another like, song come on man I was messing with yeah. Anita with the maybe she had them t- on her man it, it just take you through a time period in your life and you realize like yo this dude really was putting out soundtracks to my life because every time a song come on, it take me to a mm-hmm. moment in my life where I was at at that time. So I want to thank you for for making a soundtrack to my life. And you definitely made a soundtrack to his life. Because when Who's a Mac came out, I thought oh, I was well, a, you You've know, never been a Mac. I'm just saying, man. It was, a, you know, never get but, but, but it was the idea of the concept of the song and that song's still relevant to today. Yeah, no doubt. Who's the Mac? Like, yeah. it's like, think about it. It's a brain game, you know what I mean? But it's like, Lethal Ejection or America's Most Wanted. What's your favorite album out of them two? America's Most Wanted. Why? Uh, you came to kicking the, the door the, down. You know, working with the Bomb Squad, Bomb working Squad, with everything. You know, Eric Vietnam, Sadler, mm-hmm. Keith Shockley, Hank Shockley, Chuck D. Yeah. Um, Production. Was it's crazy. just a special moment. Um, starting at Seventeen Franklin out in Long Island in a warehouse, you know, just full of records, you know. It was like these kind of shelves in there, mm. just record after record after record. Mm. And they was like, 
they come up with two empty crates. Once you fill up these crates, then we can go to the big studio. Mm. Like fill them up with what? Samples, hooks, bass line, whatever you can find in all, all of this. So we spent mm. the first two weeks listening to things, saying, oh man, we should use that bass line. Just to fill up that crate. Once we filled up the crate, then we went to the big studio, start working at Green Street. So the process, um, we would have people coming through there, you know, from, from Kane to X Clan, you know, all these dudes just popping up, showing love, um, Busta Rhymes, um, EPMD. Uh, you had Red Back Man, Red Man coming school. through, um, yeah. K Solo. Mm. You know, it was just just a special time K -Solo. Mm -hmm. to be in New York and have all. You know, it, it was just the golden age, and you know, you could be standing standing out in front of your hotel mm -hmm. and look up and Eric B drive by, whatever. You know, mm -hmm. you look this way. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Dana Dane hit the corner on yeah, you. You know, it was just one of those times, and, and you know, you knew, okay, this is a special moment yeah. in, in in life in hip hop, uh, and and it's cool. I'm from the West Coast, and I'm getting loved and embraced, and and I'm a part of it. Yeah. yeah. Now, the album coming out, man, down November twenty second. November twenty second. Twenty second. The scene come out. October 18th, classic, we already know it's gonna be classic, classic cube. But before we leave, being as though you've been here so long, what game do you wanna to give to the young artist that's trying to figure this out from a legend? This game coming from a legend that's gonna look at this interview and you know, cause everybody always looking for information. How do I become this? How do I perform? How do I record? How do I, what game could you give a young cat before we get out of here? Man, do what you like. Mm -hmm. Stop chasing. Mm. Don't chase charts. Don't chase uh, streams or this and that. Just do what you like. Mm. You know, break it down to the very last compound. Mm. Do what you feel. You know what I'm saying? And then put it out. You know, be a real artist. Mm. See, real artists don't care about what you think. You know, when you paint that painting. Finish. He's not while he's painting. He's not asking. What you think? You like it? You like it? Come check a look. Come take a look at this. Not doing that. It's all about do he like it? Mm -hmm. Painting, painting, and he put it on the wall, and he gone. Mm -hmm. And everybody walks by and they look at it and then whether Some they like, it or, like not, it or not. Yeah, yeah. The artist could give a shit. Right, right. <laughs> he gone. Right. It's on the wall. Right. It's out there. And to me, that's where you want to be because last thing you want to do is chase and then you don't catch. Now you put out something that's, that you might not be feeling 100% mm -hmm. and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather put out something I love that I love and it don't work. At least I like it. Right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But if I put it out, and I'm chasing this sound or this, this and that, and then people don't like it. Now I'm lost. I don't know what to do. I don't even like it. So um, be a true artist. Just do, do what you like. Do what you feel. And if it's fire, people will people will join on. Mm. If it's not fire, maybe you need to do a little something else that you like. Right. Do a little something different that you like. Right. But always make it where it's uh it's not an outer thing, but it's an inner thing right. with your creations. Well, we appreciate you for coming through. Appreciate you, OG. If y'all ain't get no gain from that young artist, put something on the wall, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stop sitting around, stop letting the wall be naked, man. Throw some shit on the wall, keep it moving, man. Throw some shit on the wall, keep it moving. Next wall, keep it moving. Mm -hmm. That's how you win. Shout out to the legend, man, Ice Cube, man, for coming through. Hold up, I got I to listen. I think you need to have, I gotta put this out there. Most not. You should have co-MVP. So, cause I would've got that with you. The fuck 
I would have got, 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 got four buckets. points. I got four points, cuz. He did. That was the most you ever That was a big point. That was a big point. That was a clutch. Mom, when they that was clutch time. They were clutch that points. That was clutch points. I didn't even. We I'm like, them. The I fact was, that he had a girl guard, then we ain't gonna throw that man, out. We ain't gonna throw that out. She was a professional. No, I don't give off. She played for like the W. She was five two. We use <laughs> it. Don't matter. I was never pro. <laughs> and you bullied the ran all into it. Let me, let, I didn't do that. Let let me let me just say this. You know, Stephen Jackson set the tone for the league mm. when we first started. Mm. Stack. He was like, yo, I ain't got no friends out here. I'm going at your ass. You better come at me. Mm. <laughs> That's Jack. This is not going to be That's no that. all-star look in the game. Yep. We about to play for real. Mm. And that's the spirit of the big three yep. and how you play. Mm. You heard what I told uh, Professor? How you play. You, you signed this. up for this shit. Yeah, that's what I'm you saying. You signed the, that's you the signed. spirit. But Q, Q, Q was that's slick. That's the spirit. Q was slick, though. Q, Q, Q put walked the team up together. and he, he, he put the flame on me. He put the gasoline on the fire. We all standing there waiting to come out. Q walk up. He said he going to give it to you today. <laughs> yeah. I go right there. You signed up for this shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the big three. You know what I'm saying? He like, put the yeah, he put he the gasoline he on the fire. Out. Cause he was like, I'm the whole time I'm like, I'm gonna kill him, guys. I already knew what everybody was thinking. They got Professor uh, Gilly ain't winning. They was telling me you ain't getting MVP this year. Gilly ain't. He got the Professor. They, you said, all right, watch this. Right. And Q walked right up and doubt me, but he knew what he was doing. He ain't really doubt. He wanted to get me in mind. He wanted to change my mindset real quick. He said he gonna break you out, man. Like, what? <laughs> what? what? He's on. You shut yeah. up. And sh yeah. yeah. You yeah. snapped yeah. out. I love it. That's what I love, man. You know the. The spirit, the competitive, absolutely, and not being afraid to put it out there. Right, you know what I'm saying. Right. Some yeah. people, they can play, but they're gonna be quiet till right. they start hitting. Right, you know what I'm saying. Right. Like, you come out the gate zero zero, you talking head, you right. talking trash. Right. You know you, Mike Beasley was you got snapping. your yeah. You know it's uh, it's how we, how we played the game. That's right. that's how the game is supposed to be played. And the beautiful thing about the big three, right, is that you see posts that go up from the big three of certain players, and you see in the comments people saying, "How he not still in the league?" Yep, you mm -hmm. always that's you see that all the time. How, how this yeah. guy not in the NBA? The way man. they play with so much passion and he, it, so it's beautiful because just like. Any anything that's a huge business, there's a lot of politics that come into play. Yep, a lot yeah. of them. So the fact that you can showcase some of these guys and it's still questioning like, wait, he's supposed to be playing in the league. Or overseas calling like, yo, but he come over here. But he in the big three, mm -hmm. that's big. It is, you know, it shows that we are at a professional level yes. right, with the big three. You know, you can't just walk out there and get buckets unless you're gilly. Uh -uh. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, let unless you're gilly. Let, let me get but my for the most right. part, <laughs> for the most part, you, you know, you got to, you know, be at the pro level mm -hmm. um, to, or you're gonna get locked up out there in the big three, you know? So it's, it's really, uh, it's what the league is supposed to be. It's Absolutely. not supposed to be a cakewalk. It's supposed to be hard. It's hard to get a win. Right. You know, they play hard, the defense is hard. Everything mm -hmm. is a little rougher than than just the average and the norm, and that's how I like it. Absolutely. Man, we appreciate you for appreciate pulling Appreciate y'all, man. Man down. Always. Yeah, yeah. November 22nd, go get that. Yes. I'm in my ego. Yes. October 18th, man, check yes. it out, man. And it's out of here. Me and I was with a game, Ice Cube, the legend. And it's, and it's just, just like, like that. Right.